Dave here. How are you? Now, last week we had some debacles with the stream. Fingers crossed that this week it's going to be fine. I've got a green light up there on the screen up in front of me, which means my connection speed is great. I did a check on the speed test on my internet connection because we haven't got a great connection here and it is 0.8 to 0.9 of a megabyte upload. Last week it dropped down to around 0.3. 0.3 is just way too slow to push out video. How it happened with the phone, I've got no idea, but have a look here. I have the phone on standby <laughs> just in case everything falls apart. This is magic. You know, it cost a few dollars to get that phone, but it has been a bit of a lifesaver for me. Now, I hope everyone's well. Uh, I hope you've had a good week. It's turned a little bit colder here in New South Wales in the Blue Mountains and also down towards Canberra. Today is the 29th of April for Australia, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And it's 11 o'clock. We've just gone past 11 and I've still got a green light up there. I think everything's going well. If you can let me know if the image is coming through, the sound is kind of synced okay. That's all I need to know. If everything looks good and the sound is fine, I can kick on. I'm going to kick on in the meantime because, you know, I'm a flippity gibbet and that's what I do. Uh, Dave M, good morning. Andrew Winter, good day. Peter Ike, fingers crossed last week's gremlins have gone away. Yes, I and Isam coming through great in Canada. Excellent. And thank you to everyone else that's been uh, wishing me well prior. We've been having a little bit of a, a texty chat in the background prior to the um, the show actually kicking off at 11 o'clock. I think I've had, I had someone in here around about half past 10. They're very keen. I think that may have been um, ragtie. All right. I hope you're feeling a bit better this week, Ragtie. Let me read through what's going to be happening today. I've put a little bit of a list in the Show More button. If you click that Show More button below the image, and as I say with a phone, if you've got a phone sitting this direction, it's best to turn it this way up, and then you'll have the image across the top, and then all the details below if you click that Show More button. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, show off that beautiful figure, sand and wax demo to reveal figure. Now, I have done this prior, but I'm going to do it again. Looking and sounding great. Excellent. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to use the same piece of timber but the other side. This time I'm going to go through the sanding grits that I normally use and I'll show you the difference between the different grades of fleece. That's pronounced fleece, but it's spelled V-L-I-E-S. And it's a product that not many people have cottoned onto. I use it all the time for waxing because I find it's a great buffing pad. And it's, it acts almost like a, uh, a steel wool pad, you know, when you're trying to really burnish the wax in to the piece of temper. So that's what I do. Uh, ben Alipa, dust shroud fixed for the Zito Mitosaur. Now, Ben got in touch with me and said, Dave, I've got dust going everywhere. What can I do? And I said, look, have a look at the way the CapEx is designed and maybe you can make something up. And he did blow me down. He did it with a, uh, a 3D printer. So John is not the only man out there with a 3D printer. Uh, and it just went is great. And he sent me a little video in, so we'll play that in a little bit. Uh, more amazing 3D prints for the Stanton Bench. As I was saying, with John printing his stuff, he's got a promo pack at the moment that he's doing. It's called a starter pack. And I'm going to go through all every part in that starter pack. And people have asked me to do a dedicated video on the different things that John's producing. And I think that's a pretty good idea. I'll, I'll go through it in depth today. But if I can do an absolutely dedicated video, that might be good. The reason being... People that watch the show just watch the show and then it stays on my channel, as you know, for about a week. Then I transfer it over to the second channel. Now, if you aren't aware of that second channel, which has all of the previous live shows since I started that second channel, have a look in the show more button area there in the description below the image. Scroll down, you'll see the second channel's address. And you, if you can go over there and subscribe, that's great. I'd like to get it up to a thousand subscribers. That'd be really nice. Um, it takes a fair while for me to transfer this live show down switch over hats from one Dave Stanton to the other Dave Stanton and then transfer it up, upload it. You know, it's an hour or so for me to do that. So it'd be nice to be able to get a bit of monetization happening on that. Now, I'm not doing this to be greedy. I'm just trying to recoup some <laughs> reward for what I do. Uh, associate me. I'm sorry. Uh, what's the next thing? Unexpected visitor in my home during the week. A magpie came into the house. Now, he's adopted us. These magpies have lived on the property for years and years, as long as I can remember. They have their babies here, and I don't know where the babies get shooed away, and the mum and dad stay, but the mum and dad are very tame. Uh, they don't attack us at all. They, they, we have never been dive-bombed on this property, even when the babies are being you know, raised. Uh, anyway, this week, a magpie came into the house. He just walked across the carpet, 
hopped up on the kitchen bench in front of me and was, you know, looking around, well, where's the food? Amazing. So I've got some video of that. Uh, Patreon, check out the rewards that I'm offering. Uh, I have this afternoon, I've got a Skype chat that I'm going to be doing with one particular gentleman. And I did that two weeks ago with another gentleman. So it's one of the reward levels. You can have 10 minutes uh, Skype with me if you feel that uh, that it's worth it. I don't know. Some people might think, oh, if I do. Well, there's some people out there that I can help with some advice on their own special projects. And there's another level above that Skype level, which is uh, I'll give you email support. You can email me at any time and I'll respond as quickly as I can and try and address any issue that you might be having with woodworking or construction. Because remember, that's my history building. Uh, so if I can help, I can help. So I have different levels there. It starts from a dollar called a rusty nail. <laughs> and basically you're helping me me keep things covered in costs as far as the channel is concerned. What else have we got? New giveaway this week is from Irwin. It's an Irwin tool bag and a couple of uh, driving bits. You know, I think it's got Phillips on one end and Posse on the other. Uh, and this has been don donated to me by um, Jeremy Carter, who is the uh, sales manager for Stanley Tools, uh, I think on the east coast of Australia. And Jeremy also watches the show now and then. I said to Jeremy, look, IMUFs have been donating IMUFs all this week, all this month, I should say, uh, do you think you might be able to fill the void a little bit? So Jeremy is going to do the competition prizes all next month, which is fantastic. So the first one is on today. Jump in and get a uh, put your uh, entry in. It, it is Australia only, and all of this next month will be Australia only. And also, Carbotech have put their hand up and said, Dave, how about we offer a prize as well? They didn't actually say that. I went begging to them. <laughs> I said, hey, guys, come on. Can you give me something to give away on the show? And they said, look, let's give it a shot. Why not? So there we go. That'll be coming up soon. And it's a really, really nice prize. And I'm going to keep it a secret for a little while. What's the next thing? Um, okay, so the new prizes next month will be Stanley Levels. There are three of them, different types. And also, when the winner uh, gets chosen from that Rafflecopter, I will send that email address over to Jeremy and he will forward an email on to you to get your shirt size. And I don't know if they've got a scone height size, you know, the, they've got this little expanding thing on the back of those caps. And, you know, it's a handy thing to have. And there, as I say, they will be for Australia only. Uh, keep the channel afloat. If you can use the links that I throw up, you know, it doesn't cost you any more to use those links. It's just because I'm suggesting that uh, you go in and I introduce you to Amazon or the other companies they turn around and give me a little reward for it. But it's the same price as if you were going in there without using that link. So that's a way to help if you can. Um, all right, photos from where you're watching or projects you are building in your shop, especially animals in your workshop. That's great. I love to see things like that. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's good fun. What else have we got? Um, chat and more if it can be squeezed in. I'm going to have a quick look here and then we'll jump into the first demo. Um, Good if this is from John Parra, good evening everyone from Northern Carolina, Garcia Bros from Texas, uh, Los Wits, looking forward to the dedicated yellow box shed video. Maybe can read minds. <laughs> Leroy, Leroy, I have got my TS55 out and I found the answer for your question regarding being two degrees off. I'll show you how to fix it straight away. It's a piece of cake, buddy. Um, Ragtie, hey Lee, David M, 20 thumbs up, 72 watching. Planty, Dave, all good, this loud and clear in Melbourne. Thank you very much. So nice of Carbon Tech to donate a CapEx. I don't think that's going to happen. I do not. And don't try and weasel the question, the, the prize out of you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to succumb. Okay, let's get into it. Also, I will be uh, announcing the winner of the latest IMUFS competition or giveaway sweepstakes or whatever. And right here, I don't know if you can see those, but last week I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we got people to say why they should win the IMUFs? Now, I didn't, I didn't use this to pick the winner. I used Rafflecopter. It's a random search and bang, 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 a random, random selector, and it picks someone. And I've, I got this because I want to read these out. Some of them are cards. Anyway, let's switch over to the other camera. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? And I think that's got us. Should be good. I'm going to also do a little bit of reading from over here. Um, Lyra, awesome, Dave. I really appreciate it. Been sending me crazy. Derek, the blue tongue was at my beach unit. Can you send, Lost Wits, can you send that picture back again, please? I lost it. Uh, there you go, Lost Wits. Maybe that's why. Now, I have all of these 
If you like my nice holder, this is one of my paint trays because you know that I've been painting the garage out there. I don't know if you can't see it for the moment. It's coming up great. I've got a video also that I've done on patching a hole in Villaboard. Now, patching a hole in Villaboard is going to be very similar to patching a hole in Giprock or sheetrock or plasterboard, whatever you want to call it. But it's um, it's a little bit different, only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, bit different. But I, I will take you through the whole process from the, have the holes in the wall to uh, you know just floating it off and then painting it. And it's come up very, very nicely. I'll move these out of the way. Now, the TS55, I'm going to undo the power and this. And I'm going to go back over to this other camera because I think it might be best for this part. Uh, where are we? The other camera is there and transition back to here. All right. Now, this, for people that aren't aware, is what's called a TS55. TS standing for track saw. It's a Festool and it has a 55 millimeter deep capacity of cutting if it's on its base plate without the track. The track takes five millimeters. So I always allow six in my equation. So basically we'll do a 49 to 50 millimeter deep cut when it's running on a track. Okay, now Leroy has got a problem here at the front. You'll see there's a degree selector. Now I'm working khaki handed here. There we go, all right? Now that is telling me that at the moment it's at zero, is it? Or 40, yeah, it's at zero. See that little blue Oh, sorry, blue, green indicator there. Now, Leroy, what you need to do, you don't have to take the thing apart, and you won't see my face in this, it doesn't matter. You release the front and the rear clamp. Okay, let it drop. Now, can you see, let me see if I can show you to them, just here. See, just there is a screw. And at the front, there is also another screw just here. If I can show you, as I say, working khaki handed, I'm coming in close on the screw there. See it? That screw head there. Now these are a torque screwdriver head, so you will need to adjust that with a torque screw. Now see how it comes out of the bottom of the saw body just a touch, and it will land on the base plate. So as I bring the base plate up, let's see if I can show it to you. It is designed to act as a stop. Now, once you've got that adjusted, you just come down through the top. It's very easy to do. Can you see the screw head there? I'm going to try and point to it again. Um, up there. See the screw head there and the one at the other end? Give them, give them a little nip. Uh, sorry. I'll come down here a little bit lower rather than staring at my tummy. Okay, you, you tighten them up or back them off, whichever way. And then keep doing some test cuts. Don't worry at this stage. Don't worry about where that indicator is. This one here at this stage. Just get it so that the saw is cutting at 90 degrees. You can check it with an engineer square. That'll be fine. You could also check it by doing one cut. Take the off cut. Turn it over and push it back up and see if there's a gap at top or bottom. Do you follow? If it's dead square, when you turn it over, it should marry perfectly back square and square again. If there's any gap, top or bottom means you're slightly out. So you can use that way as, as a kind of a test cutting instead of using a square. And the thicker the piece of timber, the better the, the indication is going to be. Now on the front here as well, there is the tiniest, tiniest hole. Can you see that dent? in the front of the plate here. Well, right in behind there is another torque screw. Can you see it in hiding in there? That loosens off. Ah, jingles. <laughs> that loosens the indicator and you can move it up or down so you can get it back to zero perfectly. Now, Leroy, I hope that's working. That'll answer it for you. It's a very easy way to adjust the saw. Festool gear is fantastic because you can adjust it, you can set it straight, you can set it off if you want. I don't know why yours is off. Maybe someone's been mucking around with it. Maybe someone was playing around with it. I don't know. Maybe it got some dust caught in there. Could be any sorts of things in there, but have a look. Okay, let me have a quick read. Blue Tongue is a beach unit, saw stop, 
um, uh, no, the prize has got to be something from Festival. <laughs> Derek Lark uh, will do. Thank you, Derek. Dave M. Uh, Steve will surely win if it's a Festival item. Uh, well, maybe. Uh, positive stops need adjusting if they are misadjusted can cause a twist. Or is it so, or is it so minute that it wouldn't affect it? You need to adjust those together. Exactly right, Lost Wits. So that they've got it's got to be perfect. Now I presume the chat is still running. That the show is still running. Um, I can't see any comments coming up lately. I'm going to switch around to the other camera. If someone wants to say, "Yep, yeah, we're we're still live," that's great. Um, what is the next thing? Let's have a look at the cutting with this saw. So I'll switch the camera to the other one. And everything should be running fine. It looks like it's going great. Um, I will have a look at this phone. It might tell me. All good. Thanks, John. I'll go to the other camera. <clears throat> now, people have asked about these dogs. Now, you've heard me go on about John's dogs a lot, not his uh, little terriers. I think they're terriers, uh, but these dogs here. Now, how do they work? And I'm also going to address concerns. I have people say, Dave, I love the idea of the bench, but you're not cutting on top of the bench and getting a zero clearance from the bench top and not supporting the timber, the waste as it falls off. Now, that is true in both counts. My answer to that is, if it's hanging over the edge, this is not a sacrificial bench. It was never designed to be a sacrificial bench. The MFT3 is designed to be a sacrificial top, but this isn't. I have aluminium track in here. I have anti-slip in here as well. I don't want to stuff that up. With these, these long dogs that John makes, and I will undo this one here. You can set it up if you want to. These things are great. These are all part of his starter pack. Okay. Now, you can do, put that there and have the track here and cut along there if you wish. And it will put a slot in there. You can, if you want to, get a three millimeter piece of MDF and put it, put it down on top of here as a sacrificial top on top of the stand and bench. It would live between there and there and go that way. It has to go the full length and it has to come out to this side as well. Then you could set your plunge saw to go through the thickness of the track, which is five mil, the depth of the material plus two millimeters. And that would be, you would set that on this indicator at the front here, and I'll bring it up just in case people haven't got one, or they don't know what I'm talking about. See this here, this is my depth of the cut, and it says um, FS or ordinary. Well, actually, mine doesn't. Mine's an older one. The new ones have got FS or ordinary. Now, my German is not great, but FS stands for Furenschiene. <laughs> people are going to say you're an idiot. I've pronounced it Furenschiene. And what happened was I have people that I know that are German watched me say that and they started laughing their heads off. So it's more of a bit of a song, I think, for <laughs> Now, Now, or Fura is guide, as in, you know, the Fura, guide. That's what that is. And Shin is track. So guide track or guide rail. That's what it stands for. FS is for guide rail. Uh, so that's what that is. You set it to the depth you want and then you can cut. Now. I don't like doing that. I prefer to have the bench on a top. And if I wanted to, and I do have another one of these that I made that doesn't have the skirt at the front, I set it up beside it. I have a gap. And then when I put this there like that, and this one there like that, this one there like that, this is there. I set up the gap and you can see, I'll put my thumb there. It's that far away. The saw will be cutting this far away from the edge of the bench. So just as long as I've got around about two inches between the two benches, that's all good. There's no need to stuff things up. You don't have to do a full size bench. You could do a half size bench and put it there and just use four of the legs that I've got here or four of the legs that uh, John makes. Remember his, his little legs? 
<laughs> I've got them somewhere in the box. Okay, let's do a demo of, act of actually using it. I'm going to have a little bit of coffee as I go to, hopefully. Where are we up to? Thanks, Andrew. Adventures in Wood purchased my TS5096 and it's cutting perfect. Maybe, maybe build a second bench without the track. You could do if you wanted to, or you could use what I just did then. Inspired to get my track saw out to save up. All good in the UK. The gremlins are defeated. Excellent. I think Carl and John are on the case. They're my deputies. <laughs> How cool is that? All right. Now, piece of wood. A typical thing for this bench is plywood. Now, this is 18 millimeter ply. It's an off cut from when I was doing the draw fronts. So I shall pop that there like so. How good is that? Now, you might notice that I got the M8 bolt out. Now, this is one of the things in John's pack. It's this little guy here. I see him got M8 written on it. And remember what I called it? Mate. <laughs> there you go. He does these in M8 or in 5 16th, whichever you want. Now, you'll notice that the front here, that can have a little bit of movement. But if you put this underneath it, because the bottoms are threaded, he's actually printed the thread into it. Let's pop that on there. And once you've used them a couple of times, when you first put the bolt into the, that plastic thread, it's brand new. So it's, it's tight. Once you've used them a few times, it's brilliant. Look at this. That, that ain't going anywhere. That's brilliant. Okay, now, I am going to use these two small dogs, the short dogs, to push the saw up, to push the um, product up against, push the timber up against. If I wanted to, I could ask John to print up some shorter ones, or I could even cut the top off that a little bit to allow me to put a dog there and take that dog out and slide it down to there. And now I have my cut will happen there. The issue has been when the track is sitting on here that the saw, if it's set too deep, will hit this, the top of that. The super dogs alleviated that. Now I haven't tried this with John's dogs, so are we game? And John's probably in the background saying, Dave, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, 101, 42 thumbs up. That's great. Hey, Dave, everyone, Hilton, Ragtie. Uh, excellent. There we go. Now, this is 19 millimeters. The track is... Now, why am I counting up now? Because I'm not over the top. Because I want the motor to stay up as high as possible. If I go full plunge, obviously this is going to come down and hit that. So I'm going to do a bit of counting and see if we can be a bit sneaky here. Okay, so 18 or 19 and 5 is 24. And let's say two, so I'll go 26 millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll slide this indicator back up to 26. And these are also slightly adjustable as well. Now when I can check, I can check it. You know, I love this. I love this stuff. Okay, I can check whether it's going to hit. So I've set the set, set the depth, set the set. What am I talking about? And as I go through, yes, it's going to hit. But I maybe. Maybe the blade has gone past the end. And you know what? It has. It's gone very close to going past the end. Now, if that dog, and I might suggest this to uh, John, if that dog was possibly 20 millimeters lower, I could have a selection of tail end dogs. It's not going to worry me at this end. It's not going to worry me at all. It's just that end. So if you could have a selection of dogs. There you go, John. What do you think about that idea? Now, let's do it. Let's do this cut. I also like to use UJK's uh, rail clips or dog clips, whatever you want to call them. These little guys slide in here. I'll bring one up close. It's a tiny little clip. Slides into the track. G'day, Harry Miller. How are you? I'm reading as we're going. Uh, it's a tiny little clip that slides into the track, and you push them up, upright, like so. 
you bring them up to the side of where the dog is going to be, and then you put, twist the track over sideways, drop it down like so, and let it go. How good is that? So that holds your track up against the edge of the dog, so it's not going to go anywhere. We'll move that out of the way. I'll slide the piece of timber along a little bit, a bit of plywood, and you can see I'm going to cut that off. I don't want to cut so much off. I still want to keep it. It's only a demonstration. There we go. Now you need around 200 millimeters of track on the approach for the saw to hold itself correctly on this key. This, this key here is doing all the work to hold the saw in position. I've set the depth. I'm going to connect the lead and the dust hose. So the little plug it lead for the track saw. And these are a nice tight fit. And the hose, and I don't really need to have um, dust extraction while I'm doing this. Let me see what else I've got here. Let's throw some of the eye muffs on because George has been extremely generous with all of these prizes. And he also gave me a pair of G6s, which have got a shield across the top. So if you're doing stuff, there's a lot of dust dropping down over your forehead, it doesn't get in behind there as well. But I like these ones because they're very, very handy. Now, I put them on, I, I extend them all the way back. I'll bring it over and show you because this is an interesting thing. They, the ear part goes on a slide there. So I bring the ear all the way back and then just a little bit of a quick demo because wearing specs. I put it on there, drop it down, and then I slowly pull it back evenly either side. They work great. Here we go. Don't lose that one. And don't cut that, David. That'll be a tragedy. If I lose the camera straight off at the beginning. All right. I've got the guy here. That, sorry, got the <laughs> reading stuff here at the same time. Uh, excellent, 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 excellent. Range of tall dogs. Beautiful. Okay. I've got the little shop back down there. Well, can't call it a shop back. I got pulled up by the company called ShopVac for calling it a ShopVac. It's a dust extractor. There we go. It's like Band-Aid. You know, in Australia, we call a Band-Aid. It's, it's a, you know, protective strip with sticky either side. Band-Aid. You know, I call everything a Band-Aid if it's a Band-Aid, you know, elastoplast, what have you. Um, I know in England, they call a vacuum cleaner Hoovers because that's the brand. Oh, where's the Hoover? Anyway, <laughs> let's do this. So I've got the... So there, I'm going to start her up and do the, start the plunge. So it's always best with a saw like this to start the saw up before you actually push the plunge down. Okay, start up because if it catches the timber before it starts, you're gonna it's it's gonna be very hard for the saw to start. Did it? What do you think of that? What do you think of them apples? I love this. Have a look at the cut. Now this is this is the factory's cut, and this is the cut the TS just did then. And I was using the aluminium blade. Absolutely beautiful. That's the factory. You can see it's all rough as guts. And that's the aluminium blade. All right. Now, I wanted to go through that first, and I'll take these off. How good are these? George is on a winner there. Okay, I wanted to show you that first because it's crucial to why two things. Why I built the Stanton bench and also the what the dogs are for. As I say, there's, there are so many things that you can do with a geometrically laid out dog hole um, board. It doesn't have to be mine. It can be other, other companies. That, lots of people make similar things to this, just that this one is nicer. <laughs> okay, let me see what else we've got here. So there's a few of these dogs. As I say, they are plain. Now let's bring the rest of these guys over here. Oh, I'm going to lose that camera if I'm not careful. I'm going to slide that into there. There we go. That should be better. All right. Let's go through. John is doing a starter pack. 
and I think he charges $70 Australian for it. Now, you will have already seen a few of the things that are in your starter pack. I'll undo this. Talk amongst yourselves. Now, these are extremely accurate. He prints them using, he uses Fusion 360, prints them all on his printer at home, and away he goes. So, in his pack, two tall dogs. Whoop. Two tall dogs. Two short bumpers. Two M8s. Now, I'll explain a little bit with the, with the mates. There's a little nib in the side. You can put a screwdriver in that. Turn it. Both sides. And you see there's a set of dowels on the female side to accept. I'll bring it up closer. See the pins? And this side accepts the bolt. Now, the bolt can be taken out, and he supplies the bolt with it, and you can put a nut in there instead. So if you put the nut in there, you have a dirty big uh, spannerized nut, if you want to call it that. So that's one thing. There we go. There's the nut there. I've already got, there's a nut. I've already got a nut in this one. So you can do that. And you can buy M8 thread if you want to. Nut inside there. You can buy M8 thread and that allows you to do all sorts of other things with it. Let me give you a for instance. <clears throat> if you were to get a 5 16th nut and put it inside here, you would be able, let me see if I can find one, to do something along the lines of getting a Craig bench clamp or any brand of bench clamp. This has got a 5 16th thread in the, the body of the thing there. You could, if you wanted to, get one of John's small dogs that's got a 5 16th thread inside it. And you could put it up from underneath the bench, like so. You could have a bolt like this, that's longer, that's 5 16th, you can cut it to length. You could bring it all the way up through that and then keep it going into the body of the bench clamp. Then you would have a swiveling bench clamp mounted in one of your dog holes. So, pretty smart. Pretty smart. What else have we got? So he gives you two of those in this starter kit. I'm going to put everything on that side that comes in the starter kit. Let me put that back in there. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because John's a nice guy. Why wouldn't you? So that could have a nut on it, and this one can go into there. So that's two of those. What else has he got? Um, corners. These little guys here. Let me bring it over. These little guys have a corner on them. So I could use that, for instance, if I wanted to put it there and I had a piece of timber that I needed to hold in a position where uh, it's, a, it's the actual corner. Look... I'm sure there's going to be a heap of people out there will work out a way to use that straight off. I could have a, um, a wider piece. Maybe I've got a triangle and I could have a clamp and push it up into it and it would hold the corner. Or I could have a 45, like a, um, I'm doing a 45 degree picture frame. And that had been cut off at 45, another one at 45. I could push the pair of them into there and then just hold in position while I uh, screw them together. It gives you two of those. Okay, I'll put it up the right way. What else does he give you? He gives you two flat ones. <clears throat> I've got to drink some more coffee in a second. So these flat ones are really happy. I'm really happy. What am I talking about? They're really handy. So I could use those in addition. Let me put that one there. And there's another one. I could put that one there. And I could put that one there. And these are all in the kit. It's amazing. And I could put that. Oh, that's not long enough. What have I got that's going to be long enough? 
This isn't going to be thick enough, but anyway, you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. I can put that there and it can be supported. I can put these anywhere on the bench and that will be supported. So that's a corner. I could put a larger piece. Let's put the piece of gum that we're going to work on a little bit later on. This is the figured gum tree, red gum. I could put that in there and I could plane it or I could sand it. I could put that stop at this end, like so. Bring that along to there. Because if I'm sanding it with a belt sander, you know the belt sander wants to go that way, so the piece of timber on it is going to want to go that way. So I could sand away on, on the bench like that, not a problem. I can also take advantage of the cushion strip, but if you're using a belt sander, it's going to be pretty aggressive and it's really going to want to grip it. So I think it's going to go past friction and you're actually going to be into this. How are we doing for time? 25.2, that's fine. Uh, what else has he got? We have the standard one of these. So oh, also, I had a word with John. I said, John, getting them out sometimes is a little bit awkward. We need to have something underneath there. And yet, as you can see, it's, it's been awkward for me a little bit more than required. So he's put these little finger grips underneath. So you can see those. Makes it easier to get it up. Yes, the Rotex can be used to polish. You need the Rotex polishing head. It's a green head, uh, Hilton. The reason it's a green head, I oh, use that one, it has no holes. So you're not going to suck any of the polish up, which is an abrasive, into the motor of the Rotex and kill it. So don't ever try and use a, a Rotex to polish with the standard head on it because you will kill the machine. What else have we got here? Cam clamps. Two cam clamps. So they end up you know, reducing the, the thickness between a stop and the piece of timber you're holding. And they work brilliantly. You can also get these little spaces to go in there as well. So they, they're handy. And keep on putting the things up there, David, that everything that comes with it. Whoop, drop that one. Pick it up. So even straight away, you can see he's doing something really fantastic for you. What's the next thing? And I will do a video on pretty much everything he does because that blows me away. Now, he's got these little caps. Now, over here, I have painter's pyramids. Now, I've had painter's pyramids for ages and they're for supporting something if I'm painting it. Okay, I have been using it to let this piece of plywood stabilize out and go flat. And it's done that. It's great. It had a warp. It was about a quarter of an inch warp. I let the air get all around it and away we go. It worked brilliantly. So... I could have, I could have, I could have, I could have put these four dogs in this bench. Let's go there, there and there, and there, there and there. Move those guys over there a little bit. And put the Smurf caps on. <laughs> what do you think? These are brilliant. Okay, so they are basically go onto a dog. Then you reckon it looks like a little Smurf? I'll bring it over. I can't do a Smurf voice, but uh, I reckon they look like a Smurf. Put a white beard on it, give him my beard, and away we go. So now, same thing. Support it. I can paint, I can get do the edges without touching. And also I think if you were to utilize the uh, the dogs that have got the holes in them, these ones, with the threaded sections, you could put some threaded rod in there as well and you know, double up on some of the things and raise them up to be different heights. They could work well. There we go. That is the starter pack that John is doing. I've put a link in the description box down below. Um, go for it. The uh, Smurf caps, that's what we should call them, John. <laughs> not we should, you should. It's not... No, the, be aware, this is nothing to do with me. I don't get a kickback from John. I don't want a kickback from John. He's a guy that's just done a heap of initiative. He's been very supportive to me with the channel. Uh, and so why not? You know, I'm, I'm happy to share the love. All right, what are we doing now? Let's move away from John's stuff. We'll put it all back into this, into my paint tray. I haven't had a chance to read any of the chat. I'm going to tell you who won the... Eye muffs in a second. <laughs> you thought you were going to know straight away. Hilton Bond, it wasn't you. <laughs> Aren't I terrible? Uh, dear. Hilton, I think, went out and bought some for himself. Uh, okay. 
uh, it went to an Australian person again this week. And I'm going to switch to the other camera and then we'll come back over here in a second. 103.6. Can you put a beard that clips? <laughs> oh, we've all gone silly. Where are we? Switch to the other camera. There and there. And more coffee. Are you enjoying the show today, guys? It's, it's moving along quite well. There's a few things that, uh, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to give you content that's showing product. I'm trying to give you content that gives you some information as well. Like for Leroy straight at the beginning, how to fix his saw, how to use a track saw on the Stanton bench without stuffing the top. It's not a sacrificial top. Um, so that's easy enough to make a second one. You know how to do it already if you've got the plans. You can just knock another one up, especially if you've got um, Peter Parfit's UJK Path Guide system. I use that all the time. People said to me, Dave, it's a one-off tool. You know, I'm not going to use it. Well, you are. I've used it four or five different times. It's handy, handy, handy. Coffee. I told you, Dave, never win anything. Okay. I'm going to read through some of the responses. And the question was, um, why should you wear, well, why should you win the eye muffs? <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start reading down. I wear prescription eyeglasses and the eye muffs look like they would be better to use with a mask than any other on the market. And I agree. One response, I need them. <laughs> uh, I watch every week and I'm in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Need I say more? Uh, I struggle with having to wear eye protection over my glasses with ear protection and invariably end up ditching the eye protection. Eye mask will really help to be safe. <clears throat> yes, because I follow Dave religiously. Uh, getting ready uh, for a late spring working in the shop and don't have any masks. Please, Dave, because uh, they're great and I don't have a pair. I think I'd like to protect my health. This is the bit where I never win. I can't think of anything to say. Uh, uh, because they are awesome and if I buy them and pay shipping and tax, the cost doubles. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry about that. I, I have no control over that. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, looks like a great accessory that uh, that's easy to use and I'll look great in them. <laughs> uh, to protect the little hearing I have and left after being a a deal during my work life and taking it for granted uh, to always misplace. I always misplace my clear eye protectors, but if they were attached to bright colored earmuffs, then problem solved. That's a good answer. I wear glasses which don't provide adequate eye protection. I, I myself have trouble with uh, PPI during the wearing, wearing normal glasses all the time. So I think that would help me so much. Thank you. P.S. Love watching your show. <laughs> if that one wasn't a suck up, I don't know what was. Uh, but I'll take it on board. Thank you very much. Uh, we're old and grey and what I have left needs all the protection I can get. I'm just starting out woodworking. I want to stay safe. That's a fair call. Uh, because I might actually use them instead of leaving them in the damn drawer. Now, that's a very good answer. That's been me. Uh, but unfortunately, it's nothing to do with this. It's, the, it's a random pick. And I've told everyone before we started, it is a random pick. Uh, in a small shop, having eye and ear protection in one item is another space saver. Indeed it is. I work for a big hardware retailer here in Iceland, and uh, they have never heard of them. Nice idea. I want them in sales. There you go, George. Get in touch with Iceland. Uh, I only have two eyes and two ears, and I'd like to keep them all working because I'm fond of them. I only have safety glasses. I wear glasses, and I struggle to find decent eye and hearing protection. They say I'm beyond help, but eye muffs would be all that help. I need to work safely, and that is all of the uh, all of the comments that were put in. My nose really itchy. This moustache to give me curry today. All right, who won? If your initials are DL, you're in the in the running, and if you live in Australia, you are also there. And I won't tick you off anymore, Derek Lark. You are the winner this week. And you, this was the last week that the competition for the IMAFs was running. Next week, we're going to be doing the, well, already it's up there. Jump in, go down into the show more section, click on that part that says um, show more. And down you go to this week's competition, which is the Irwin tool bag with some uh, posi and Phillips head bits in it. Donated by Jeremy Carter from Stanley Tools in Australia. And again, 
this next month will all be Australia content. Uh, it's, the winners can only be from Australia. So uh, please don't enter the competition if you're overseas uh, because if it comes up, it tells me what country you're in and I'll delete that entry and just move on to the next one that comes up Australia. Okay, so congratulations, Derek. Uh, that's brilliant. Now, next thing, we'll do the sand and wax on this. I'm going to read through here. Oh, before we do that, let's have a look at Ben Mapala's Malipa's um, dust shroud fix. And we'll, then we'll jump into the other one. I don't think there's any sound on this one. So here we go. He wanted his name up there as well. So I did that. This is without, um, this is what he made. And in a second, we'll have a look with the dust collection. And that is a huge difference. So what do you think of that? That's Ben, that's your minute in the sunlight. Spotlight is on you. So that was great. Fantastic result. And I got in touch with John. I said, oh, you've got a bit of competition, mate. So there we go. Uh, what have we got next? This and uh, Mr. It looks OK. Now, Frankie CNC Woodworking Channel. This is this is recorded as well. So don't worry. It runs for a full hour and the, it will stay on my channel for the week. And at the end of the week, I'll switch it over to the second channel and the link is down below and you can go through and watch you can get bored silly watching day rabbit 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 on for an hour for many many weeks <laughs> okay okay Derek fantastic Dave uh, and George that's great I'm so happy you won them mate I know you've been really trying for it track saw on a slab much faster than a Ryoba saw I uh, lost was way to go Ben awesome yep uh, ben, I've an Zito needs one. How much? <laughs> there you go. See, it's all a matter of community. I love doing this because people pick up ideas from what I've done. They pick up ideas from what other people have done. And also you get to see a little bit of nature. Now, who wants to see the uh, the magpie come into my place? I'm going to shut up during this because he comes. I'll tell you about it to start. The magpie just walked across, <laughs> came in the door. The parrots, if the parrots come into the house, they panic because they forget which way they came in. They look at windows and they try and fly up left, right and center. The magpie is a bloody smart bird. He knows where the door is. He flies onto the deck. He walks in over the <laughs> doorstep, walks right over to the kitchen bench, flies up onto a stool, then onto the bench. Basically says, well, where's the food? <laughs> so forgive the lounge room, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. That room up there is just one massive room. It's our lounge room, our dining room, our office, and our kitchen. The whole top story of the house is fantastic. We love it that way, but we live in it. So my apologies <laughs> for how it's going to look. Here we go. Get some more. Let's see what we've got. Can you chew that or not? Or is it too big? This is I'm off with this one. What do you think about that? What a world, hey? Isn't it amazing? There's so many things out there that are free. They're absolutely free. All you have to do is just take the time to appreciate them. It's like a sunrise or a sunset. I love to watch a sunrise or a sunset if it's a real good spectacular display. If it's boring and gray, well, not interested. Um, the parrots, when they come in, you know, they give them a little bit of seed and, and they're, they're really cute and hang out. The magpie, smart bird. I got a lot of respect for that animal. Uh, what do we got next? What do we got next? Uh, down we go. Ben, 3D prints done. Unexpected visitor. Patreon, new giveaway from Irwin. And we're going to have a look at that beautiful grain. Here we go. I'm going to switch cameras again. And I'm going to take you through my process of what I do with sanding. Now this is a piece of red gum and I'll show you closer up. You can see it's got a bit of figure in it straight off. Okay, but it's not popping yet. A lot of people when they see timber they go, oh wow, that not that nice? Or they'll look at this and they'll say, well, yeah, it's a piece of red gum. But they don't look hard enough to see what's underneath the surface. Now if you, if you hold a piece of timber up after you dress it, 
you can look down and it's easier to see the change in the irregularities in the grain rather than just looking straight, pardon me, rather than looking straight down on top. So I am going to put that on the cushion strips on the Stanton bench because it's not going to slide around. It's as good as a router mat. And I'm going to get the Rotex and we will sand that with the Rotex. When I'm doing flat surfaces with the Rotex, I use the blue pad. Now this is designed, it's a very thin pad. It's designed not to have any cushioning, so it won't follow the, the contours of the timber. There are all sorts of other types of pads. And also I use this guy. Now this looks like a duckbill and I love it. Anyone who gets a Rotex, I strongly advise you get this. The Rotex comes with a handle that you put in the side, like an angle grinder. And I find that because I'm on two, I'm on either side of a quarter of the rotation of the whole area there, I tend to lean into one, one quadrant. With the duckbill, it's directly opposite. And it goes on very easily, like so. See? So it keeps my hand off the top of the motor because the motor does get hot so out the front and out the back even pressure as i'm pushing down get one if you've got one of these get one of these they're not expensive now sandpaper the grits that i use are 80 80 120 180 and 240. i haven't got any 240 this week i've only got some 220 here with me now these are all reuben sandpaper which has been designed for working with timber for as long as first has been in the game basically but they've just come out with this one around about two years ago this is called granite and it's a ceramic abrasive and also it's a coated surface so that the uh, sawdust or resin doesn't have as much chance to stick to it now i'm not promoted i'm not i'm not paid by festival to tell you any of this stuff i'm just giving you advice of what I do. So I'll start off at 80 grit on this one and I'm in geared mode. Now when I'm in geared mode, hear that? It's not going anywhere. Now if I push this button on the top here, down, I'm in a standard random, or random orbit sander again. So I'm going to go back to the geared mode, which gives its, its power and aggressiveness. There's new uh, pads that they've just brought out recently that have got more holes in them. I don't know what they call them. Uh, Jetstream 2, I think, possibly. And they've also come out with a similar thing to Abronet. So in their granite, they've brought out a mesh. So I'm going to put this on. I always start from a hole closest to me and then line it up on the other side. It's important you get that paper on centered and directly over the holes. As I say, I start with a hole that's closer to me and then I line this up as I lay the paper down onto the pad. And that normally gets it pretty well centered. If the paper is off centre, the machine's going to jerk around a lot. So you don't want that. Get the power from the saw and the dust extractor from there as well. And the dust extraction on this thing is brilliant. That's all I can say. It is absolutely brilliant. How are we going for everyone else's there? Uh, no, what Mum wants? Whoop, whoop, showing my support and leaving my thumbs up. Hi all. Good on you. Uh, we love <laughs> your advice day. Ruben paper must be made by Vitex. I have no idea. That's an interesting thing. I don't know who makes the papers prior to them being labelled because they are labelled. See that one, the granite? It's got Festool written on it. The Ruben, let me have a look. I'll see if it's got Festool written on it. Yep. Festival's written on that as well. But of course, they could do that after the, after the fact. Now, this time, I don't really need any eye protection. So I'm going to put the eye muffs on this way. The duck bill is brilliant. All right. You ready? It's going to make a bit of noise. You may want to turn your volume down a little bit. Here we go.
Now I decided, while I was sanding just then, I decided, how about I show you the differences? You notice that I've sanded from there up to there. I'll get a pencil and I'll put a mark on it. There. Now the next part I'm going to sand, I'll bring 120 up to here and then I'll do 180 and then I'll do 20. And I'll show you the difference. You may not be able to see it through this kind of camera, but look, we're going to give it its best shot. Notice it did not move anywhere. I'm not clamped down. I'm, there's nothing. I'm using the cushion strips on the bench. I like, people wonder why I like this bench. It's from years and years and years and years of doing stuff. And I thought, you know, I want to design a bench that's going to really make me happy. And this one does. I, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Do you see any dust? Am I talking strange? Am I <coughs> or anything like that? No, nothing. This is great. This is 120 grit. Again, I put the paper on from my side. I make sure that there's no rubbish on the pad because it's a it's a Velcro kind of a stick fix kind of thing. I'll line up one hole with the hole closest to me here, centering basically. And notice I'm lifting the pad the paper up. I'm curling it. So I've got that one down there. And as I go across, I'm making sure I'm lining up with the other side. Done. It's easy. It really is. <clears throat> I will have a look for you on Amazon a little bit later, but best will sell them. You know, that's that's all there is to it. So 120. Let's go to the earmuffs again. I'll come up to about there. <laughs> You, you do this stuff and you go, yeah, now I remember why I do all this. This is just beautiful. It's revealing itself to me beautifully here. So that's 120. 80? Nothing. 120. Now the next one I go to is, I normally jump in grits of 60. I'm just checking that I was telling you the truth. Yeah, I am. Okay, the next one is 180 grit. So 80, 120, now 80 to, to 120 is 40 grit. Then it doesn't need to be as close a jump. So the next one, as I say, is 180. Again, same kind of thing. How are we doing up there? Um, okay, you found it, good. Woolworth, uh, Peter, uh, I mentioned that because the other Vitex sandpaper, it looks and performs identically to the root. Excellent stuff. Uh, where those is, you must correctly. <laughs> I should do, shouldn't I? I don't really need any eye protection while I'm doing the sanding. Also, if you want to get the duck bill, if you jump into Amazon through one of my links in the description box down below, and then you do a search for the duck bill yourself, the, my channel will receive a small commission for you being introduced to Amazon through me. And it helps. I'm, I'm not going to lie about it. It does help. It's great. Okay, 180. And I'm going to do 180 from there to there. You want me to put the eye muffs on? Like so. All right, done. Done. 180. <laughs> I'll go straight to, um, that's it there, 180. I'll go straight to 220. As I say, I normally go to 240. I could go down to 320 as well if I wanted to, but, you know, look, there's only a certain amount of time on the show, and we've just gone 12 o'clock. I'll stay till I wax it. You can hang around for a second, can't you?
All right, I'll bring it over to you and you can have a look before I hit it with the wax. Okay, so we have at the top. Oh, I don't know if this is going to show any good. I'm going to slowly bring it up. 120 was when it really started to pop. And then down to 220 here. If I do that, maybe it'll work. Maybe not. It might be better that way. I don't know. But I can look, believe me, I can see it. <laughs> um, while I've waxed it, I'll bring it over to the other camera. Right, waxing. I'm not going to use the Rotex for that. I'm going to use the ETS, and I'm not going to use any dust extraction. Where are we? And I'm going to use the Velize pad. <clears throat> or fleece. Now these guys here are aluminium oxide pads. They're designed for steel and for metal. You can see this one's had a hell of a lot of work. This is an 800 and this is a 320 equivalent. Now people when you first get these, when you first get them out of the box, they feel sharp and you think oh it's going to be too aggressive, it's going to destroy everything. But after you've used it on a piece of timber for maybe a minute or two with wax, it builds the wax up in the body there and it just becomes a burnisher. It works very, very well. The 800, if you want it to go super, super duper um, smooth, um, well then go to the 800. Now the wax, I'm just using this stuff. This is uh, the neutral. This is going to give me a satin look. Their triple E from U Butte is again... Yeah, you know, just <laughs> oh, I love it. Sorry, I'll stop talking, but this stuff. I'm only going to do this last little bit at the end. Use some cotton to put it on. I normally try and use white a white t-shirt or you know something that's cotton that's white is easier. You're not going to muck around with the dyes that are in the in the material. As this is a demonstration, it's not really concerning me too much. I had the blue stuff. This is an old t-shirt that I had. Oh, funny about that, isn't it? Um, and, and, and the sander. I'm going to use the ETS-5, which is a lot easier to use than the Rotex, and it's a random orbit only. Let's plug him in. I'm not going to connect the dust extraction to it because I'm not really going to be doing anything to be cutting material off. I'm only going to be putting the fleece pad on. They also do a polishing pad to go on these. And I know Hilton said earlier, can you use the, um, can you use uh, the Rotex for polishing? And I said, use the green pad. Well, this, because I'm not using polish, it's only wax. It's not going to do too much damage to the inside of the machine here. I don't think, see the, the polish is a wet kind of a compound and it can get sucked up and go through the motor and it's, and it's an abrasive. The wax is not an abrasive. So earmuffs again. I'm only going to pop, pop earmuffs again I should say. I'm going to pop them on that way. I've put it on. I'll bring it over first. You can have a quick look. I've put the wax on and you can see it's just sitting there and the figure is starting to pop on that red gum and that is absolutely beautiful. Okay, there you go. That's what you've got to search for in Amazon when you're going through my link. Peter's just thrown it up for you. Cord clip to make it fit. John, have you got a cord clip you can make to fit in the dog holes? Yeah, that's an idea. I use... I use the um, just one of the, the festal clamps that goes on the end. But a cord clip could go well. Here we go. I'm going to give it a little bit more wax. There should be enough on the rag. You 
in an ideal world, you would shellac the timber first. You'd do a few coats of shellac, build the shellac up to fill any of the grain, and then you'd hit it with the wax. And then the wax used to be the way that, you know, they protect timber in the old days. It's just, there's a whole lot of wipe on polys these days that people like to use. And I know it's nice, but I like the wax on the bench. The wax has held up brilliantly on this bench. <laughs> I love it. I'll bring it over. You can have a look. Tell me what you think. That's the satin. Oh, it's glowing in those lights, isn't it? I'm just slowly rotating it. It's picking up one of the lights above. Well, it's picking up a few of them. But that figure is really starting to pop in that red gum. It's absolutely beautiful. And the wax... Look at the difference to what it does. Magic, magic, magic. Alrighty, let me see, where are we up to? I will switch the cameras over again. We've gone over by 10 minutes, sorry guys. Um, <laughs> yes, you can say that. Let me get this other camera over there. All right, there we are. I'm gonna do a quick read. Uh, where are we? Good idea, Zane. Um, Use the, we used to use the Rotex with the scourer and water with detergent to foam it up a little. Um, Matt Warner, I keep a pair of string gloves in my wax bucket as a polishing rag that gets into the crevices and wraps it around small pieces. Really love, yeah, that's a great idea, Matt. I hadn't considered that. Cameron, uh, Dave is using an invisible cord clip that's designed for cordless tools. <laughs> Frankie CNC, uh, that's like the 1,000 foot cordless extension cord. Yep, well worth the extra time. Great show as always. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Dave. Great show. Let me have a quick look here. Oh, they're beautiful timbers. I'm going to have a look at the program. I've done the prize. Derek's over the moon about that. I've shown you the timber and going through the waxing. I've shown you the dust fix for the Azito drop saw that Ben Malipa did. Um, the, all of John's stuff on his, his uh, starter pack for 70 bucks plus postage. I reckon that's a bargain. Jump in, swamp him, swamp him with, with orders. He's, he's sitting back going, oh my God, how am I going to do all these? He'll find a way. Don't you worry about that. Uh, Patreon, if you can uh, jump into that and join in with the other people that have done it to pick up some of those rewards, it's all good. Uh, the Irwin giveaway for Australia only this week. And as I say, this rest of this month will be um, some levels. I think I've got three of those 1200 millimeter levels and they're all different types. There's a carbon... I think it's carbon fiber, a box, and a Stanley Fat Max. Dewalt shirts and caps. Um, there we go. So thanks again to all the patrons that have helped out this week. I'll read, read out the names. Roger DeBolt, Johannes Moa, John Wilson, John Parra, Vincent Niang, Louis Uberg, and Raymond Tott. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And thank you so much to the Internet Gods for the stream actually performing this week. And uh, I, I hope you have a great week. And don't forget, send me some photos in of projects you're working on, things that are happening in your workshop, visitors, animals dropping into Say Good Day. It's all good fun. I shall see you next week. Be safe. Be nice to each other. Bye.